Hey Fragrance family, I'm David, I'm a fragrance bro. Of course, your best source for everything fragrance related. Today, I have a review of this, Date for Men by Fragrance One, Jeremy Fragrance. There have been a lot of people asking me to review Date for Men. I did a review of Office for Men, if you wanna go and watch that up there. And I have thoughts about that fragrance and I have thoughts about this one. Now for full disclosure, Jeremy Fragrance did send this to me for review. And I do really appreciate him doing that. Jeremy Fragrance and I are cool, we're fine. But I do have some things to say about this fragrance. Some people are going to take my comments about Date for Men and they're gonna say that I'm saying that about Jeremy Fragrance or I'm gonna say that about Alberto Marias. But you have to understand that criticizing a thing does not mean that I'm criticizing the person who created it or the person who owns the company or whoever. You can divorce the ideas behind the fragrance itself from the person who made it. With that said, let me say that Date for Men and Office for Men will go down as a classic case of what not to do in an ad campaign. The ad campaigns and the kind of whole strategy behind talking about Office for Men and Date for Men has been strange at best. There is a semblance of cohesion between the ideas of what it should be and how it was made. But then upon further inspection, once you get closer up, you realize it's kind of a mess. Now I mentioned much of my thoughts about Fragrance One and this whole kind of approach in my review of Office for Men, um, but Date for Men kind of takes it to another level, I think. As the name implies, Date for Men is supposed to be a date set. It's supposed to be something that you want to wear on a date. The problem is, this doesn't smell romantic. And if you wear this on a date, I think it's gonna be your last one. It's not gonna leave the type of impression that you want to leave whenever you go on a date with someone. Date is not attractive, it's ugly in the very truest sense of the word. And I can only imagine Jeremy getting advice from some of the models that are around him and they lie to his face and then he makes this. Now what I usually advise for a date set is something that is of moderate strength, that smells um, enticing, that's going to attract someone to get in close and then stay there. But this is the opposite of that. It's terribly loud and it's obnoxious. It's the type of person that when you go on a date, they're very loud and obnoxious and boisterous and arrogant. And they try to convince you that they're a very confident person and that they really don't give a about what people say. It's that guy. It's repulsive like that guy is repulsive. It's loud like that guy is loud. It says the wrong things and when it says them, it says them too loudly. And you just want the date to be over with. The notes here are even stranger and I'll put them on the screen here so you can see them, but I don't get a whole lot of what they put in the note list. That doesn't mean that they're not there. It just means that there's a disconnect between what it says in the copy and what it smells like on your skin. There's supposed to be citrus here, but I don't smell a very strong citrus in the traditional sense, maybe a facsimile of one. There's definitely no oud. There is a, maybe a smidge of juniper in here, but what I get overwhelmingly in this is hot, sticky, salty, bubblegum. This reminds me a lot of Invictus in all the worst ways. And I haven't compared them side by side to see how true that is. But when I wore this, the first day I wore it, it instantly brought up memories of, scent memories of wearing Invictus and testing it out. And that's really funny because scent memories don't lie. They instantly recall a memory from your past. And the fact that I had a scent memory from wearing Invictus is telling by itself. And this is the part of the review where someone interjects that women around you love it as if I should care or as if that means anything. And I hate the sentiment of this argument because it implies that all women like all things equally and that they're not individuals. They're not people who have opinions about things because women are. Women are individuals. They like some things because they're an individual, not because they're part of a collective. How sexist is that to say that women love this, therefore buy it? But the other thing too is that not all men want to impress women, whether they are taken or maybe they just don't really care about a relationship or maybe they just don't care about impressing other women with the scent they're wearing. There's a whole slew of reasons. Maybe they're not interested in women because they're not attracted to women. There's a whole number of reasons why people want to wear a fragrance not to impress women. <laughs> and in my experience, if you solicit a person and ask them what they think about the fragrance point blank, 
then they're going to give you the answer that you want to hear. They're most likely not going to give you their full thoughts if their thoughts are negative in any way. They're gonna give you the type of opinion that's gonna make you feel good about yourself for asking the question and make them feel good about you feeling good. They're probably not gonna tell you that it's bad. And this is where part of the breakdown comes from with that whole compliments thing, but also to the whole campaign with Jeremy Fragrance point blank asking people what they think of the fragrance without even trying it on their skin for themselves by just going up to a person and saying, I made this, what do you think of this? I would say that there probably are people who would like this, but I would also say that there are people who would not like this. And just because you get compliments from something doesn't mean that everyone around you likes it. It just means that maybe some people like it. If the women around you like it, cool, but there are gonna be many people around you who aren't gonna say anything because they don't wanna tell you that it smells bad. And this fragrance smells bad to me. Whenever I wear it, I get that Invictus type of smell. It's very cheap smelling to me. It's too strong for what it is. It is kind of that quasi salty, uh, somewhat citrusy, somewhat overly sweet, sticky type of scent. And I do not care for that at all. For a date type of fragrance, I find that it's really weird that this goes so young. It skews so sweet. It doesn't smell as inviting as uh, the real knockout date scents do, in my opinion. To me, what I find really works on a date is something that is somewhat soft, somewhat spicy, and somewhat sweet. And that's why things like La Nuit de Lome or Original Santal or Mont Blanc Individual and a number of other fragrances that do well for romantic situations are that style of fragrance. Those styles of fragrances are masculine, yet they're inviting. They're soft, yet they're cuddly, and they invite someone to maybe stay close to you, which is exactly what you want on a date type of scent. This will repulse people. This will push people away. They'll quarantine themselves from you at arm's length. Um, it's not the type of fragrance that will bring people close. It will divide people for sure. But the actual copy and the ad campaign of this is even stranger. If you go on their website and you look and see what the actual copy is on the website for this fragrance, this is what it says. It says, Date for Men is an oriental fruity powerhouse. We have a clash of four fruits bergamot, lemon, mandarin, juniper berry, mixed with a clash of oriental sexual masculinity of four notes, patchouli, oud, vetiver, cardamom. The fruity opening is the flintiness, that's on the website, or the flirtiness on a date. The laugh and smile, the rich mids through patchouli and cardamom bring the seduction. <laughs> then we have the immortally masculine oud and super sexual vetiver. Like, who wrote this? It looks like Jeremy himself wrote this. And I realize that English is not his first language, but I would think that having an audience that is predominantly English speaking, you would want to have someone sort through this and correct all the mistakes and make sure that it makes sense and to an English speaking person. Whenever you read this, it borderlines on comical of how weird it is. The first thing you think of is a clash of four fruits. Okay, that's bizarre. That kind of sounds like a bad thing. And then the four fruits are citruses with juniper berry, which is not a fruit. Oud is in all caps, which is a strange thing. You have another clash of oriental sexual masculinity, which I don't even know what that is. And then you have the repeated references to sexuality, which doesn't even need to be here. It's really strange. And it looks like a first draft from someone who is not a native English speaker, but it should have been corrected from someone who is an English speaker. The byline of the fragrance says, it's perfectly engineered to bring out your inner CEO. And Robes08 had one of the best mic drops I've ever seen in my life when he read this and said, more like your inner intern. <laughs> this is such a strange fragrance. It smells pedestrian. It's way, way overpriced for what it is. One of the funny things is that if you look on Fragrantica, it's overwhelmingly negative responses from people who uh, have tried this. But the funniest part though, is not that. The funniest part is to see on Fragrantica where it says how many people made it their signature scent. It's one person. One person. That's Jeremy. <laughs> it's funnier that it's one person and not zero. If it was zero, it wouldn't be as funny. But the fact that it's one person, you know who that one person is. Listen, I'm not making fun of anyone who likes this. I'm not making fun of Jeremy. I'm not making fun of Alberto Marias. Everything went wrong with this. The price is astronomical. $250 for something that smells like Invictus. No thanks. It's way too loud for a date. It smells cheap. It does not smell like something you want to spend that much money on. No, 
It's very strong. It's in the excellent range, at least for longevity and beastly on the projection. Maybe you like that, but on a date fragrance, I don't think that's necessary and I would not want that, but it's bad. So for me, this is a two out of five. What do you think of Date for Men? I'd love to know your thoughts. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. I love you for it. I'll see you next time. I'm Dave with Fragrance Bros.